The content discussed in this video, are not the products of imagination or random fictional ideas. These are the research findings, originate from the extensive work of renowned hypnotherapist, Dr. Michael Newton. Dr. Newton would guide individuals into a hypnotic state, during their treatment for common life traumas, leading them to explore their afterlife or spirit realm. This unique approach enabled patients to grasp the underlying meaning, objectives, and purposes of their existence. Through this metaphysical therapeutic process, Dr. Newton himself gradually gained, a profound understanding of the afterlife and the spirit world. The conclusion of his insights, is encapsulated within the pages of his book. The book describes, a comprehensive journey of a soul, spanning from the moment of passing to the spirit realm, and eventually reincarnating into another earthly life. The hypnotic persons depict, the experience of death as natural and even blissful, with exceptions for cases of premature demise, due to accidents or acts of violence. Typically, departing spirits describe the transition of the soul, from the demised body, similar to a radiant beam, emanating from the head of their lifeless body. Some less experienced spirits, retain an attachment to their living relatives and offspring even after crossing over, desiring to stay with them for a short duration of time after death. These spirits may wish to witness their own cremation, and attempt to communicate with the people nearby. Conversely, seasoned and mature souls depart promptly after death. Those subjected to hypnotic regression, can remember the journey to the spirit world from Earth, as a luminous tunnel pathway extending from Earth. In this otherworldly realm, they observe themselves as softly glowing, spherical structures of varying colors. Upon traversing the tunnel, an expansive open space emerges, where the departed soul encounters familiar individuals from their human life, such as friends, partners, or family. This meeting happens with overwhelming joy and harmony, as the spirit world is free from negative emotions like hatred and anger. Each newcomer is warmly welcomed by the existing spirits. A crucial element of the spirit world is the presence of guides. They are highly evolved souls, who help the newly arrived spirits, to remove the residual trauma and distress carried over from their past life. Furthermore, these guides facilitate the soul's continued growth, and provide guidance throughout their stay in the spirit realm. The aura color of each soul reflects their level of maturity. Maturity isn't solely determined by the duration of their existence, but rather by the knowledge they've acquired and the purposes they've fulfilled. When people are in the spirit world, the first important significant event, that happens is the review their past life, by guides and advanced souls. This introspective process delves into the purpose duties during past life, and the extent of their fulfillment. It's important to note that there's no punishment for not finishing things, not even if they took evil or sinful stuffs. The guides and advanced spirits just feel sad about those. They comfort lower level spirits very gently. In the spirit world, spirits make groups with those they knew in previous lives. Everyone there treats each other with lots of love and care. It's interesting that groups of people often meet each other again and again in different lives, taking different roles. The souls in the group are assigned various tasks, which begin with conversations about their past mistakes and achievements in life. They also assist each other in comprehending the reason for their existence. Some individuals describe these activities as a group discussion. Additionally, souls reconnect with members from their previous lives in the spirit world, and share moments with them. Research shows that most spirits have a white aura, which means they're new souls. As they experience more, their aura changes. In today's world, most souls are at level 1 or 2. They come back to life to learn and grow. But higher level souls don't come back as often. When they do, it's not just for themselves, but to help society and make the world better. Research also suggests that advanced souls might handle more than one life at a time. Generally, once souls reach level 5, they don't need to be reborn anymore. In very rare cases, there might be presence of level 6 souls on Earth, with very strong spirituality. 
People like Swami Vivekananda and Mother Teresa might be examples. A reported hypnotic session with an advanced level 5 soul was really interesting. The lady narrated an astonishing ability, to create aquatic creatures, through her soul's inherent power in an alternate realm. According to her, even more advanced souls have the potential, to generate entire planetary systems, filled with intelligent life forms. This metaphysical research finding supports the idea of extraterrestrial life. It also highlights the potential connection, between humanity and those beings, through the medium of our souls in different lives. Maybe our souls lived on other planets as different creatures. During the stay in the spirit world, mutual care is extended among individuals, to heal the wounds incurred during their previous human life. Following this phase, the time comes for the return to Earth or reincarnation. Some souls, however, resist returning due to their frustration with Earth's social environment. Guides make efforts to convince them, emphasizing its importance for their personal growth. Notably, no one is forced into this decision. Conversely, certain souls eagerly anticipate their return, particularly those who met unfortunate fates. However, advanced souls advise them to await for the optimal moment. Eventually, when the appropriate time arrives, or the soul is fully on board with the decision to return to Earth, a meeting is arranged with highly evolved souls. This meeting determines the most suitable life path for the spirit, potential parents, and even the circumstances, challenges, and lessons that need to facilitate for their spiritual development. The soul's own desires are also taken with warm consideration. Remarkably, some individuals, while in hypnotic trance, claim to have glimpsed their future life during such encounters. Following this, the next significant event is an orientation with other souls, who will play pivotal roles in their forthcoming human existence. This includes friends, mentors, spouses, and acquaintances. Importantly, these spirits commit to assisting one another on Earth, to achieve their respective life goals. Intriguingly, they establish distinct signs to identify each other in human life. For instance, a future partner might mention wearing a gold pendant, enabling recognition. Or they might share a specific word to be uttered, during their first encounter on Earth. Subjects undergoing hypnosis have emphasized, the paramount importance of this orientation within the spirit world. Ultimately, when the spirit is ready to depart the spirit world, they follow an alternative illuminating path, different from the one that brought them to the spirit world. This time, they traverse the astral plane in the opposite direction, toward Earth. Suddenly, they encounter a dark and warm space, which is undeniably the mother's womb. Gradually, the spirit begins to intertwine with the developing baby's brain and muscles. In the initial days, the spirit may briefly depart the baby's body, to meet other souls from the orientation, if their timing of returning to Earth align. Slowly but surely, the spirit becomes fully integrated into the growing baby's form. It's worth noting that the adjustment process might continue even after birth. Journey of Souls presents a detailed exploration of the afterlife, and the interlife experiences of souls. It claims to provide insight into the purpose of life, the nature of the soul's journey, and the processes of reincarnation and spiritual evolution. The book has garnered both praise and criticism, with supporters finding its accounts compelling and thought-provoking, while skeptics question the validity of the reported experiences.